Hey guys, welcome. Following many requests from my subscribers and followers on social media, I finally decided to make a video on not just how I use the container darkroom behind me, but also how I'm building it. So yeah, follow me inside. There you go guys, this is it. If you've been watching my previous videos, you've probably seen that I do all kinds of stuff related to large format photography. That's why I've divided my container into two parts. This is the Lightroom and behind my back is the Darkroom. So yeah, let's start building. I started my week with making a new desk for the bright part of my container. On this side I will build a frame to support the desk and on the other side I will be using these plates for support <coughs> which will be screwed underneath here. My budget is always tight so I will be using some scrap wood for the frame and I also bought the cheapest kitchen counter I could get in a Home Depot. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm always lacking flat working surface. This additional counter will be used as a desk for my computer and monitor so I will be able to edit my videos and design new things. had to build the frame for the other side because on this side I'm using this metal support. Supports are installed so now it's time to test it with the counter. I am a very precise person so usually everything fits really snugly. In the darkroom blog below you can check out how many travels I had installing the darkroom sink I built. After putting all the screws in it was time to check if the counter is level and yeah, it was perfectly level so can't wait to start using it. Next thing I did was installing a lip or a metal channel on top of my uh, darkroom sink. I had to make some cutouts first before I could proceed with the installation. this channel I covered the gap which was formed by uh, screwing the front panel to the darkroom sink. If you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below. Yeah I think it turned out better than I imagined. As you can see there is still many things that need to be done. Today I will be finishing and fixing up this LED strip that I use for the safe lights. It's an RGB strip. Uh, I've already installed this aluminium channel but I have to continue this channel all the way up to this corner and I have to cut this LED strip in two parts and wire it up. Also this channel that I bought has a milky, milky screen like this and this will dim down the safe lights even more. They run all along the shelf, here, here and then they go in the corner here. 
and run also above the sink and they finish in this corner everything is remotely controlled so you can dim or make that it is brighter with the remote so yeah first I will be cutting this LED strip here in two parts I had to strip them off so they could be soldered and uh, let me tell you it looks much less violent at normal speed please don't judge me I don't remember the last time I've been soldering I also had to cut and resolder the first part of the strip because it got damaged at some point and it was not showing the right colors. Time to test it. Let's see if this works. Red works. Green works. Blue works. So also the white should work. Yeah. Let's continue. Now this strip will run along this shelf here, all the way to the corner. And this is where I need to solder two pieces, the one that comes from this side and the one that comes from this side. Now that LEDs are ready, it's time to cut out the missing aluminum channel. I'm simply using two-sided tape to put it in place. Now that the channel is in place, I can start mounting the LED strip back in. I thought I would need to use a new adhesive, but it actually fits in the channel quite snugly, so there is no need for that. I proceeded with the installation of the milky screen. There you go guys, LEDs are now installed inside this aluminium channel here. Let's see how they work. 3, 2, 1. There we go. I can also dim them down with the remote quite a lot as you can see here. At this point it was time to clean things up a bit after all the construction work. As you can see at the top of the screen, my ventilation system is also not finished yet. I also bought this basket where I can store all the things that I use for washing. Cleaned the sink, which I built myself and it works great. Next up I unboxed all the glassware that I own and stored it in a cardboard box that I got from the grocery store. I inserted the box into a drawer along with my magnetic stirrer. When experimenting I usually make a lot of notes, that's why I proceeded by installing the magnetic board. It's attached simply by using only two screws. There your body is in place, so now it's time to modify the holder for the markers. I would like it to stick to the board, that's why I'm attaching the magnet on the back.
To finish up, I organized also all of my developers, film holders and other photographic materials. I made this shot just to show you how many chemicals I own. You can make so many things out of them, from developers to emotions and so on. I will not be giving you a detailed tour just yet as there are still many things I'd like to do, but it's for sure coming, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks!